Hi guys, Paul here from Muscle Car UK. Just, we're not outside today because the weather is not too bad, but it's a little bit better inside one of our showrooms. So I have got a magnificent car for you today, which I really think is a work of art. It's a 1956 Ford Thunderbird. And as you can see, it is absolutely stunning. The quality of this restoration is bar none. It's absolutely superb. It's body off, chassis off, the underneath has been done. It's been done beautifully. Really is sort of a hundred thousand pound restoration in my opinion, because I know how much these, these things can cost nowadays. But it's absolutely beautiful. And you can see a 56 was, it was brought out by Ford to try and compete against the um, Corvette, which had come out a couple of years earlier. It did extremely well and they outsold Corvettes massively. And as a result, all the people wanted one. All the stars in Hollywood going back to 1955 when this first came out, this is a 56. We had Marilyn Monroe went and bought a 56. Frank Sinatra had one, Elvis drove one, Clark Gable had one. You name it, anyone who was anyone in the Hollywood area had this. You can see why, because it's such a beautiful car. When you, when you look around it, I mean, this is, this is a, in what's called Fiesta, Fiesta Red. And it's absolutely superb. As you can see, the, the work that's been done to this car is exceptional. It's been back to metal respray. We've got photographic evidence as well. So that helps when you're making a decision to buy a car to literally see what it's all about. What I'm gonna try and do today is to show you through this car so you can see the quality of this restoration because that is really important when you're buying a classic car. But when you look at the front of this, I mean, you've got the, the Thunderbird sign there, which is, it's just a beautiful name to call a car, I think, in, to start with. And obviously, Thunderbirds ran for many years. Here we have this beautiful chrome grille and these sort of bullet shape overriders, real rock solid, amazing bits of chrome and Americana, as you can see. Look at that bumper bar, absolutely beautiful. But you can see the headlights are lovely with a little sort of little lip to them as well, which really makes it attractive. And if you come down the side, we've just had to put a new set of tires on this car because it had been in a, in a um, it used to belong to a royal family and it, they've had it in one of their museums um, for 10 years and it hadn't moved. So the tires were cracking a bit. So we put new tires on it, 185.15s, so it dries really beautifully. But if you can come down the side, you see this little area here, there's a little um, bar inside which I can show you, which just, it's, it's a vent basically. So when it gets warm, it undoes. And you can see it's all been finished correctly inside as well there. This car has air conditioning fitted to it, vintage air conditioning. So that helps with keeping yourself nice and cool in the summer. <laughs> Listen to the sound of that door. That's how they used to really build them in those days. But look at the alignment of the doors. Absolutely perfect. Really beautifully done. All the chrome, as you'd imagine, tip top. When you come towards the back here, you have these spats which can be taken off, so you can show the whole wheel if you want. But a lot of people, including myself, like that design. It's something different. Just look at the way they finish them in the chrome. This chrome moulding here, you know, just absolutely beautiful. Just putting chrome on for the sake of chrome. But those were the days when everything was just done to look like a real stylish car. And of course, and that epitomises the way they went to work with these cars, really make them look gorgeous. So you come back, you've got this huge deck lid at the back. Now in 55, the spare wheel was put in the boot, but in 56, they decided to put it out the back here and they called it the Continental Style, which meant that basically you pushed the button down, moved that away and lifted the, lifted the boot up. Now let, I'll show you inside the boot now because uh, it's quite a fair size. They wanted to make these boots bigger so that when the families used to go out in them, etc., you could get pretty much anything in it. If you can try and get into this grant, the light's not perfect, I know, but you can see the size of the boot. You can put a set of golf clubs in there um, or a couple, of, a couple of cases if you go away. But again, I want to show you the quality of this restoration. If I move the, look at that, the way that is done. You can see it's, it's of high, high quality all the way through. And that you'll see underneath the car in a minute is literally the same underneath. This really is a, it should be in a museum, but absolutely beautiful. And if you walk around to the back here, this is also a way that you can get to, uh, get to your petrol cap as well, is through that. You don't have to have the boot open. You can close it and still get it from there, but you have to move the, the spare tire back in. And that pops straight back like that, lift it up, lock it in, and there you go. 
But if I can draw your attention to these beautiful lights as well, you can see, I mean, this is sort of the jet age was arriving. And again, it still harks back from those sort of 1940s and 50s cars, but just starting to look, these beautiful shapes all the way around. And again, you've had this sort of little deck leg here. And again, look at the chrome. Chrome's beautiful, especially for this continental pack here. You can just see it's all beautiful all the way around. And as you come back through it. So this car is superb all the way through. And the bit that I really love more than anything else is there's the exhaust exit in the bumpers. You'll never see that again, ever. They never build them like that ever again. I suppose the electric vehicles never will. But what a fantastic little bit of work there to actually have the exhaust so it comes out through here. Again, that sort of jet engine look about it. But absolutely beautiful. Um, let's have a look inside the interior because there's a few lovely things going on in there as well. Here we go inside. I mean, it's all been done, as you can see again, with this beautiful two-tone colour um, bench seat in the front. Here you've got the air conditioning. This again is, is to be made vintage air. It's made to look like the old style air conditioning, as you can see there, which works perfectly. Automatic, it's a lovely car to cruise. It's got the easy glide power steering on it as well with the updated original uh, steering wheel. Absolutely beautiful. If you notice on the dashboard, all this turned metal that they did in their day, absolutely gorgeous all the way through there. And you've got things like the lighter, all done in sort of a, like a jet engine sort of bullet shape, whichever you might think. And that, and that goes across all these, the wipers, headlights, etc. And again, the idea was that when the driver was sitting there, it was easy to see. You have the clapometer, as I would say and suggest, which goes through there. You've got the lovely little electric clock, which was rare in its day. And you've got a, a rev counter here. But all done beautifully. All the chrome is absolutely immaculate. The carpets are superb. Everything about it is just absolutely gorgeous, this car. I absolutely love it. So you've got power steering, you've got automatic, you've got air conditioning. Let's have a look under the bonnet and you can see the quality under there as well. Now they had a couple of different engine specs on this. This is the, in the 56, they brought out the 312, which is 225 brake horsepower, four Ventura Carburetta. So this is the more powerful car. And as a result, Ford in 55 decided to take this to the national speed trials um, in De at Daytona Beach, where it was up against all the European cars, the Corvettes, etc. And at this accelerated everything, would you believe? So although it looks such a class car to, to cruising, this has got quite a lot of acceleration, or certainly for the 1955 standards, because it won that championship. But have a look again at the detail on this car. It's pretty much standard all the way through. It's obviously had the vintage air conditioning unit put onto it, which has been done in a nice and correct manner. But just if you look inside here, Grant, if you can get inside to this and just see literally how well this has been done. The engine's been out, everything's been painted correctly. As I said, it was body off the chassis, engine out, literally strips a nut and bolt. And what a fantastic job they've done of it. But beautiful all the way through, a lovely, gorgeous car. And uh, what I'll do is I'll start it up now and you can hear it run. Well, let's just hear this car start up. Beautiful. Power steering, absolutely stunning. If you sit here and you do feel king of the road, I love this windscreen as well. It's one thing I forgot to talk about was this windscreen, this beautiful shape of this windscreen as it curves around you as you're driving along. It just, it just feels absolutely gorgeous when you look out and have a look at this. The dashboard's in superb condition as well. If you haven't got any cracks in the dashboard, as you can imagine, with a restoration of, of this quality, it's absolutely superb. I love this car. Really gorgeous, gorgeous. Let it run for a while. I don't know if you can get in, Grant, but some of that, if I come around that side, I want to show you the, uh, the door shuts as well. I mean, the way this has been done. You know, you can see all in the door shuts here. Beautifully done, beautifully done. It's got the lifeguard design, which was an upgrade. It had two locks on the doors. The dashboard was built in a different way. The steering wheel, as I said earlier, was done in a concave way, evidently to cushion any impact. I'm not so sure about in this day and age, but that was what was called the lifeguard design. 
it was supposed to be safer, safer for the, the people in 1955 to take their family out in. But again, look at that, that curve there. Beautiful, beautiful shape to it. You're never going to get cars like this anymore. Just gorgeous. The chrome is stunning. The interior is stunning. <laughs> you can gather. I just think this car is absolutely beautiful. And it's just ticking over beautifully there. It's a little bit cold today, so we're getting a little bit of mist, but uh, there we go. Absolute beautiful car. Fantastic, fantastic. And there you go. What we're going to try and do now is we're going to try and put this car on the ramps in our workshops, and so you can have a look underneath, because that just blows me away every time I look underneath this car. It's, it's a car, I know this sounds mad and I might be mad, but it's the sort of car I could live with. I could park this in my front room and just look at it all day long. I know a lot of you guys do that with motorbikes because they're obviously smaller, but if I could have a collection and have this sitting there and I could just adore looking at this car day in, day out, because it's that beautiful. And I possibly think this is possibly the finest one in the UK. I would say though that it must be because I've never seen one done as well as this. And again, what an appreciating classic what it would cost to do this. Anyone that's in the classic car world, whether you've got a, whether you have 20, 30 or one car, you know what these cost to do to get them into this, con in this condition. I would suggest this is in better than new condition. It really is superb. But let's get on the ramp and I can show you the other bits. This is a great position to show you. It's halfway up on the ramp and it's just absolutely stunning, as you can see. Now, when as anyone always says, always put a car on the ramp, you can see really the quality, and it's so true. Because you get a car into this scenario, when do you ever look at the bottom of a car like this without rolling around the floor? But you can just see, look at the way that is done beautifully. You know, the, the way that the, all the gaps are absolutely superb all the way around. And you get a look at this car all the way down, including, you know, these, these huge hubcaps, which were on it, obviously, when it was new. Picked out in red here, with the big white band tires, but just have a good look all the way through here. It's absolutely beautiful. The paint is smooth all the way along and the whole side of the car is really glass-like. It really is superb. I just love it at this angle. I just think it looks, it really does show the quality of what they built here. And the style, it's the style that I love. You've got the Thunderbird sign on the top here, you know, just in case anybody wasn't sure. I mean, look at all this chrome, this Continental kit. It's absolutely huge. But all the chrome's beautiful. I mean, you're never ever gonna have cars built like this again, unfortunately. It's just absolutely gorgeous. Whichever angle you look at this car, it's stunning. You can see from here, underneath, it really is superb, as I suggested. Nut and bolt everywhere. You can look, I mean, you can see the chassis, for example, here. It's all absolutely done in gloss. So you can see all the way through that the car is absolutely beautiful. Stainless steel exhausts, you can see through here, all the crossover section on the chassis. Literally, if you can get in, Grant, and you can see the floors. I mean, you just don't see classic cars done to this extent. Look at the floors on this thing. It's just as good as the top. It really is absolutely stunning. Everything's been done. You could do with a little bit more of a polish, to be absolutely honest but we haven't had time as yet. We've just put a new petrol tank in because, as I say, it's been standing for 10 years, so that had to be done. But other than that, it's absolutely beautiful. All the sills, all under here, if you can see, you know, the, the same amount of paint and attention has been done to the sills underneath and the, and the uh, floors as, as, as the top has been done. But absolutely beautiful. I don't know quite what to point out because it's all just gorgeous. Thank <laughs> you.